We're going to uh, go away from Baptist history for a minute, and we're, we do our uh, once a month, we try to look at miracles in American history. And uh, this is this story um, today is going to take two, two times, two weeks, so just to tell you that ahead of time. But we've, we've looked at different miracles throughout American history and, and how God's hand of providence is on our country. And, and uh, if you remember that recently, we're in the Civil War era, and we've come up through the country's history. We're in the Civil War era. And, and um, <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago or last month, we, we talked about the great revivals that spread through the, through the armies during the Civil War. And, and estimates are that over 200 200,000 uh, soldiers were saved, most of them baptized on, on the field, in the camps during the war. And today I want to continue to look at, look at the Civil War and, and immediately thereafter um, in what I uh, believe is a clear showing of God's providence in a very dark week after the Civil War. And the events that would happen during this week will really change the course of the world for many years uh, to come, but will change the course of the world many years later. Uh, some, some of these events will, will change the world even more than 100 years later. And so I'd like to tell you the story about uh, this, this time in American history and, the, and those changes as they're set in motion. Abraham Lincoln was a uh, one-term United States congressman from Illinois. Uh, he was defeated for re-election, but then he re-entered uh, politics in um, 1858. And then almost through a miracle of itself, he was elected president in 1860, really kind of came from nowhere and was elected president. Then he shepherded the country through four terrible years of war. The war would cost the people of the United States more than 600,000 lives. And um, Lincoln was and is a very controversial figure. Uh, he is loved and he's hated. And um, one thing that's worth mentioning though is that Lincoln believed that God ruled the world and he ruled in the affairs of men. Uh, he believed that God cared whether the United States was destroyed or survived. One time speaking to a congressional delegation, uh, he said, I have felt his hand upon me in great trials and submitted to his guidance. I am ready to walk in his way, relying on his help and trusting in his goodness and wisdom. Unfortunately, he wouldn't live long enough to see the results of his, his hard work. Uh, Lincoln was assassinated a few weeks after uh, his second inauguration on, on Good Friday, April 14th, uh, 1865. So to give you some perspective about that date, I think just a, it's interesting to note that General Lee um, signs the terms of surrender uh, at ending the Civil War the week before Easter, Palm Sunday, um, April, uh, April 9th, I believe. And um, five days later, on Good Friday, Lincoln is assassinated. That's how quickly these events happen. There's just something to, to keep in mind, to keep perspective. I do believe that, that, as I mentioned, God brought Lincoln on the scene almost in a miraculous way. Um, and then he removed him uh, almost as suddenly, and as soon as he accomplished his purpose. And there's very strong evidence that Lincoln was going, uh, what Lincoln was going to do after the war in putting the, the country back together would have destroyed his legacy and really what we think about Abraham Lincoln. The reason that's not too much of a stretch is because uh, the man that became president, Andrew Johnson, uh, his only crime was that he, tried, he, he implemented what Lincoln wanted to do after the war, almost exactly. And for that, um, <clears throat> Andrew Johnson was destroyed politically. He was impeached. Um, his reputation was damaged irreparably. Right at the end of his life, he was, he was vindicated in a way. He was elected uh, to, back to the Senate from the state of Tennessee, but he died shortly thereafter, a, a broken man and, a, and, a, and of a stroke. And he's been relegated to history. Uh, most people in the, in the polls that are taken relegate Andrew Johnson to the worst president in American history. And unfortunately, that may have been what would have happened to Abraham Lincoln had, had he lived. But that's another story. So the story I want to tell you today is uh, that leads us to, to a couple of uh, miracles in America's history. Um, some of you will know this, you history buffs will know this, but the, the, the night that Lincoln was assassinated, April 14th, um, that, that same night there was a giant conspiracy afoot. And um, there were to be two more deaths that night. John Wilkes Booth, 
who was successfully kill Lincoln, was a famous actor in the 1860s. Uh, he was uh, very well known. Uh, he would have been the movie star of his day. And uh, his name, everybody knew his name. Everybody knew John Wilkes Booth's name, and many people knew his face. And he was a Southern sympathizer, and he hated Lincoln. And he, for several months, maybe longer, had been putting together a very far-reaching plan, a conspiracy, to kill the president, kill the vice president, and kill the secretary of state all in the same night. Um, it's a very far-reaching plan, as I said. Um, the idea was that in killing the three most important members of the government, uh, it would bring so much chaos that the South would have renewed energy to, to really, you know, to, to reignite and um, to rise again and take its rightful place. That was his, that was his thought. Um, it's very possible that this would have set the country on a course that it might not have recovered from. Um, this, this conspiracy had it succeeded. It's an evil plan, and it's, a, it's one that came this close to succeeding. And I want to tell you about one of those men today um, that is part of that that was supposed to be killed that night. And this is a story that most Americans don't know. Uh, it's kind of an obscure story, but a very fascinating story. And uh, it centers around a man who most had never heard of, William Seward. He is a Secretary of State. And um, he is one of this, that is to be killed that night. And his story begins about nine days before Lincoln is assassinated. Um, William Seward uh, was out for a carriage ride with his two adult children and his personal secretary. It was a beautiful day in Washington. And they are riding along in Washington. And at one point, the horses are spooked. And they take off in a dead run with the carriage. Uh, the coachman uh, is jolted. And he falls out of the carriage. So now the carriage is, is totally running away without anyone to lead it. William Seward, who is 63 years old, he, he uh, has to stop those horses, so he comes out of the, out of the uh, carriage doors, and he's leaning against the carriage. He's trying to reach the, the horse's reins to stop the horses, and uh, he can't quite do it, and he falls face first onto the pavement. He breaks both his upper and lower jaw. He, he breaks his, his arm. He shatters three, three ribs, and he's lying there in a, in a bloody heap. His son and daughter... Uh, they assume that he's dead. He isn't, but uh, he is, almost dies there, almost drowns in his own blood right there uh, on the road. The doctors come to attend to him, and um, they, they kind of hold him together, and they carry him um, to his home, which is across the street from, from the White House, to recover. And the doctors um, fit uh, or help to help him heal. They build this contraption, and it's kind of like a steel plates, and it's made up of steel, and the best thing I can call it is a contraption. It's made up of steel plates to hold his jaw together. It's tucked down in his, by his neck. It's held together by canvas and wire and, and rope. And, um, and there he lays. Um, he begins to heal, and nine days go by. Um, he is very close friends with Abraham Lincoln, and Abraham Lincoln comes uh, to visit him every day. Uh, Lincoln talks to him for hours. Uh, Seward can't talk, but Lincoln talks to him for hours, very excited about the end of the war and planning the healing of the United States. And so we come to the night of uh, Friday, um, April 14th. This is the night that Lincoln is assassinated. And this is the night that the conspiracy is set afoot. And Seward is at his home, of course. He's, he's not left his bed. Uh, he's, still, he's still healing. And at 10 o'clock at night, uh, unbeknownst to him, Lincoln has already been shot. But at 10 o'clock at night, there's this banging on the door at his home. And his daughter, uh, his adult daughter, Fanny, she, she comes to the door. It's kind of, you know, what, who's coming at 10 o'clock at night? And um, she, there's this huge man standing there at the door. Um, and he very excitedly demands that he has to see Secretary Seward. He has to deliver some medicine to him. And um, he must deliver this to Secretary Seward immediately. Well, uh, Seward's son, Frederick, comes to see what all the commotion is, and the man argues with Frederick for a minute, and then he draws a pistol, and he points it right at his forehead, and he pulls the trigger. And the gun jams. It doesn't go off. So realizing he has a broken gun, he turns the gun, and he starts to beat Frederick about the head and about the neck. Um, Frederick drops over in a bloody heap. The man at the door assumes he's dead. Frederick isn't dead. In fact, Frederick would be in a coma for two months. 
and uh, he would recover and, and actually live a, a pretty long and, and happy life. But the man, uh, realizing that, that he's dead and the pistol is broken, um, uh, he, uh, he, thinking that he's dead, of course, he, he realizes that uh, now it's, there's nobody in his path, and he pulls this large knife from his belt, and he runs up the stairs to kill Seward. And we are out of time. We're going to have to send this to next week. I have very strict orders from Pastor Olson how long I can go. And so uh, we'll tell the rest of the story next week. Um, I have to go read the next chapter, see what happened. I don't... And uh, so we'll see what happens. But this is a, an exciting story that really will change world events many years later, and we'll tell that story next week.